Welcome to St. Anthony's. Today is the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for Ray Bergenzer and Franklin Munoz Garcia for the repose of the soul of Jerry Burgett. Also offered for the repose of the souls of Artie Hammond and Lucas Rodellis is celebrating his 75th birthday in heaven and for the repose of the soul of Lee Gilbert. Let us take a minute to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. Will not God secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? The Lord teaches us to imitate the persistent widow who keeps bothering the judge until he delivers a just decision. Such persistence shows that we are not afraid or discouraged by our dependence on God, but driven by that dependence to call out to him all the more. We persist, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Moses witnesses to this. As long as he remains cruciform, no harm comes. For the Lord is the guardian of Israel. Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed. We belong to God and are equipped for every good work. Let us pray. God of mercy, we can make no return for your immense love except to take up the cup of salvation and call upon your name in thanksgiving. Grant us humble, grateful hearts and open our eyes to see you present in the cries of all our brothers and sisters. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our opening song, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 552. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, 
vigilant protector, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, judge of the living and dead, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. quite 60, 70, or 80 yet. <laughs> what does it feel like as you grow older and your body wise? What happens, what changes to you physically as Everything. you get older? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Name a few for me. Bad knees. Bad knees, definitely. Anything else? Hips and back. Hips and back. Hold on a second here, one person at a time. Joints. Don't get too excited. <laughs> What's that? All your joints hurt, the arthritis sets in. Your eyesight? Yes. 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 Your hearing fails. Your, you get to lose hair, and your hair grows in places you don't want it to grow. Yes. Out of your ear, out of your nose, and God knows where else. We don't need to go there. Anything else am I missing? Your teeth, memory. Oh, your teeth. What happened to your teeth? You lose them? Yeah, they fall out. Dentures come in. Dentures. Shirley? Be safe. Memory. Yes, your memory fade. That's right. I'm getting to feel some of that already. What else? Your 
Oh yes, gravity rules. No matter what they say about the anti-aging cream, don't believe it. It's all lies. You grow old. No matter what they say, gravity always wins. Despite all the bull talks and all the cosmetic surgery, gravity always wins. You can't eat some of the foods that you like. Oh yes, high cholesterol. Worry about those salty well, foods food and salty. spicy food. Your bones get weak. Yes, you're easily to fall and break a. And it takes injury takes longer to heal. And when I think when you're sick and ill, it seems to take longer and longer to get better. Control. The what? Control. Control. Yeah. Oh, control of your life. You mean yeah. like driving and taking away your driver license, maybe? Well, that, no, yeah. that too. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. You may need your hands. Actually, got it. Depends. Okay. I wasn't thinking you were going to go, to go that far, but... <laughs> oh yes, your sleep pattern, right? You don't sleep very well at night, and in the daytime you sleep a lot. So therefore, I can see why our massive tennis in the morning for a weekday match at 9 o'clock seems to be getting less and less people. I can understand now why it's so hard to get up. And my question, why can't you guys just sleep earlier? You're retired, for God's sake. You have all day to sleep. <laughs> Maybe I'll understand that when the time comes. Anything else? Oh, senior meals. Yes, you get to eat the senior meals. You try to live on Social Security and the best you can retirement. Yes, fixed income, of course. Yeah, income. Of course. Can't earn the extra money. Yes, try to earn extra money. And you know, you can understand, you know, most of today, after 40 years of fighting the, the you know, of the going to the desert, he fought the Malachites, Malachites, the, uh, and his own people he was supposed to be leading. Remember the constant complaint and grumbling that he's so tired and weary at this point that his father-in-law suggested, Moses, why don't you appoint a group of men under you to hear the cases that is not so important, that can take deal with you, and the more and the cases they can't handle, you can hear them. So delegation, so you don't have to do it all because you're getting more and more tired, more honorary now that you're more and more tired. In addition, that you're leading battles now. You notice in today's first reading. Where was Moses? He was. How was he leading the troop? Was he up there with them? No. No. Up, on the hill. up on the hill. Anything unusual about that? He said, "Choose a few guys to fight the Amalekites." Because he was tired. Because he's tired. Because he's older. He's older now. It's been like he's been in years of service now. Instead of collecting Social Security and the golden years, he's still fighting. And I wonder, was he getting feeling really tired, like you guys were saying today, with all the things that's happening? I wonder if it's affecting him too. That he's just tired and weary, that he can't stand any longer. I wonder if he's, every night he's praying to God, let me retire from this. Can someone else do this job? Yeah. And yet here he is, up on the hilltop. So tired and weary that he couldn't stand much longer. So what did he do? He sat on a rock. Yes, he sat on a rock, and when his hands was raised to heaven, that's when the Israelites were winning. And of course, when his hands were getting tired, he put down what happened to him. They start losing. They start losing. You might ask yourself, huh? What does that have to do with a battle? A guy standing on the hilltop raising his hands? How does that affect battle? The Lord told him. But think about it. When you're standing on a hilltop, everyone can see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, his job in all this is a motivation for the troops. When they see him, they see hope. If he can't, if he doesn't give up, maybe they too shouldn't give up. Right. And when his hands were tired, how did he hold up his hands? Aaron, Aaron, and, her. Aaron and her helped him and hold his hands up. Because he couldn't do it anymore. Does that remind you of the story when Moses was, when all this was initially starting? When, he, when Moses was, was young, in the, many years ago, when God 
when he told God, he, I can't go to, to Egypt and talk to the Pharaoh because I don't have a public speaking ability. I'm so afraid. How did God help Moses? Gave Aaron. Yeah, he gave Aaron. Aaron, your cousin will help you. You don't have to do this by yourself. And in the same way in our life, as we grow older, mm -hmm. do we have to grow old by ourselves? Yeah. We don't, do we? That's why we have a life of a community and people we love in our life and people who love us to help us. And I think the challenge for us oftentimes as we grow older is to let people help you. Yeah. The challenge is oftentimes, you know, we have to remind ourselves we're not so young anymore that we can't, you know, if you can't drive anymore to give up your car or perhaps eventually, you know, to, to get the help you need. And, and for me, you know, sometimes that's an act of humility. Mm -hmm. Recently, a woman and a man were married for 26 years or so. <laughs> every day they wander, they, they, every day after dinner, they have a good thing going. They walk on the trail near their house. And for quite a period of time, they had a great time because during after the meal walking, they can share about the life's concern, what's going on in their day, ups and downs of life. And they really enjoyed this. Over the course of time, the wife was getting, was walking slower and slower. And the husband was kind of puzzling, like, what's going on there? I don't understand. Maybe she's getting old. I don't get it. That's why she can't keep up. And she's getting more and more tired all the time. I don't understand. And he thought, well, you know, but then he thought, that, no, no, that like something is not right. Because I know all my other friends who walk on this trail, they were smoking and drinking, and my wife is always, you know, living a healthy life. No smoking, no drinking. She has a good habit of taking care of herself. Something must be wrong. So he took her to the doctor, and she was diagnosed with MS. Multiple sclerosis. And, you know, his world just dropped down. He just kind of, when you, you know, when you hear that kind of news, he, he ended up crying. Just Throw her out bawling in the doctor's office and his wife just kind of stood there in shock but she, she just she took it better than he did because you know now he realized oh this is why my wife all that time she's not complaining but she's always walking a little slower now i understand why and i'm always complaining to her yell time honey speed up speed up now i feel kind of bad now i understand but you know he wanted her to be independent too. He, want, he, he tried so hard. He didn't know what to do. Does this mean that we have to change our life, that we can't walk on this trail, which we've been doing for 20 some years. And on this trail, every time we walk, there's a tree there that when we first proclaim our love for each other, that, I, that we carve in the tree our names on this tree with a little heart around it. I don't know how many of you guys ever do that. But every time we walk, yeah, okay, good spiel. Oh, you did that. Anyway, we mark our name on a tree and we walk by there. I'm really going to miss that tree, you know, to see that. So one of the things he did was he, he carved that part out of the tree and marked and made a shelf out of his house so he can remember. At least in days he can't walk, they can look at that reminder of many years ago. And then he thought to himself, how can I get my wife to go on the trail since her help is going to be She's slowly gonna get more and more tired. She won't be able to walk anymore. She'll stumble and fall. Well, he decided to come up, you know, looking around for a solution. He didn't know what to do. A wheelchair wouldn't work because, well, wheelchair, you know, on a rough trail, it falters. It doesn't work too well. And he thought, well, what about a rickshaw? I'm a carpenter. Never done it before, but I'm gonna look in the, on YouTube and learn how other people build, and I'm gonna build her a rickshaw. And so he built a rickshaw, she sat in it, and he pulled her along. And, he, and, and during the, afterward, the rest is history. They've been going on this trail as long as they can. And he says, well, someday, if I can't pull anymore, I guess we'll be supposed to sitting down together and looking at that sign that, that, that I love her, she loves me on our wall. And I thought, you know, for this, yes, the struggle was hard for him. But was it also hard for his wife? Yes. Definitely. For her to accept this something, this is terrible. Was it fair that this happened to her? No. It isn't. It's, you know, it's, it's awful tragedy. 
But you know, the reality is, this is a part of life. Whether we like it or not, it is a part of life. And like I said, God in his goodness give us each other to help each other out, to walk along the journey of life. That we don't have to do it by ourselves. And that requires oftentimes an openness, a change in our life to make the changes necessary. And you know, people who struggle the most are the people who refuse to change with their situation. Yeah. No, I can still drive. Yeah, never mind about that accident. Last three accidents I've been having lately. <laughs> never mind that I can't see too well anymore. And I pretend that I can hear when I can't hear. And I'm always smiling at people when they're saying something. I have no clue what they're saying. And when I say something, they always smile back at me. They're always laughing. I wonder why they're laughing. Because perhaps maybe I'm making wrong responses to what they're asking. I'm answering questions they're not even asking because I can't hear. And you know, the thing about it is life creeps up on you before you know it. Just recently, last week, Sue had a little mishap, didn't you? Welcome back, Sue. Thank you. Last week, Sue was walking, was going out on her patio. Thank God it was only two feet off the ground looking back there and taking some beautiful picture, I guess. And before she knew it, the, pl the plank gave out and she fell over. And she broke a rib and did some bruising on the leg. And this week I was like, I hope you can get back soon. <laughs> you can get back to play the piano. Because I'm thinking when you play the piano, your hand has to be in front of you. I'm wondering if it's not going to hurt her. And I'm wondering, I better not make her laugh too much. Because guess what when you have laugh? Yeah. It really hurts. And I better not make sure she doesn't sneeze. Because that, by golly, that's going to hurt. And you know, and I thought, you know, this board... Did it happen? Was it really weakened overnight? Did someone overnight replace you with good board with bad boards? No, it's a slow process. It's a slow process already occurring over time. She was just unaware of it. And the last time, I think a couple months ago, a guy was working on the board that replaced the, the rotten board. Didn't, didn't catch that. Didn't catch that. Maybe that's why he was so quick coming back. Because maybe he felt so bad. He felt really bad that he missed that somehow. The boards to be replaced. And I thought, you know, in our life too, as it happened to these boards on a patio, they get weakened over time. They get, they get aging over time, like the rest of us. It'll occur over time before you know it. You find yourself in pain. Well, guess what? The pain in your knees and your body, did it happen overnight all of a sudden? No, no. no it already happened over a period of time. Just didn't feel it until, it reached, I guess, it reached a certain threshold when you get to notice. And you know, the, the, the challenging thing for us and the most wonderful thing is that in life, we can't give up. We have a choice when tragedy happened to us, don't we? What are the choices? To accept yeah, we can we can get up and move on, or like Sue, you you have a choice. You could have said, "Well, you know, I don't know if I want to do anything anymore. I think I'll stay home, close the door. I'll close my door, and I'll stay in bed all the time." That's that's a guarantee. Well, safe way. I'm not calling. I'm not going to get hurt. Unless I fall off my bed, roll up over or something. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you can do, you can be play real 100% safe. Well, not really 100. There's no such a 100% safe. You can still fall in the shower. You can, other things could still happen. Sorry, Phil, uh, Sue, I hope I don't scare you too much. <laughs> now you're already afraid of it. I don't know about this house anymore. Everything is dangerous. But I mean, that's life, isn't it? <laughs> to live life. It's dangerous, it's scary. But it, is, but it requires a certain amount of courage to keep on living. Because as long as God give us put here on earth, we have a purpose and a reason to live. And I suspect it was, was it easy to get to church today, get in your car and drive? Yeah, I'm kinda hurt. <laughs> You're kinda hurt, that's what I would imagine you to be. Yeah. But yet you continue to get up and pray, giving praise to God. And for me, that's what life is about. Like Moses today, I can't imagine it was easy for him to stand on the hilltop from morning until nighttime. 
that he is so tired and weary. But he realized that while he's there, God is not done with him. That he has a purpose and a reason to be there. As each and every one of us has a purpose and reason to where we are right now in this very moment. Imagine the wife at that time when multiple sclerosis, if her husband just gave up. Imagine how difficult, they'll be both two miserable, awful people. I mean, not awful, you know, because they're awful, but I mean, they'll be in a, the situation will be worse because they gave up. And you know, God in his goodness calls us to continue forward. And we don't have to do it by ourselves. God is there. He sends people in our life to help us. And then God lift, uplifts us. Through the mystery of the Eucharist, through the gift of the sacrament of the healing of the sick. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to reflecting upon the fact is God is helping us in our life. We're called to be inspired, to encourage each other. And encouraging oftentimes means just that to be there in your struggles, in your frailties. That's how oftentimes you encourage each other. I know each week I get encouraged, whether you realize it or not, from, from the person you are. Because I know when you get here, I know for some of you, it's, it's a difficult journey. Just to get in the car is a difficult journey. Just to get to play the piano when you're in pain is a difficult journey. Because you're not only fighting physical fight, physically against your own body, but what do you also fight against? What do you also fight against? Yeah, the discouragement, yeah. the negative, the negative voice in your head, like just give up. You're also fighting against your very self, the the, the, the spirit of that that one of discouragement. And you know, God calls us to rise beyond that. He's there to help you. Amen. So today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to do so. To hear the voice of God, hear the Holy Spirit, that in doing so, may, may our, through our struggles, through our efforts, may we rise beyond our human frailties with the help of one another, with the help of God, that in doing so, may our words and our deeds give praise to the Lord for His goodness and His love. Amen. Amen. Let us together confess our day. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by my Holy Spirit, was the Lord of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious blood. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in the hearts of the churches. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see him to have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is glory and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Aaron, as Aaron and Hur held up the arms of Moses, we lift up our own arm to God for help. For the military leaders and heads of state, and for those who advise them in their duties, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer for refugees and foreigners dwelling in our land, for those whose homelands are torn by civil war and religious persecution, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in this community who farm or garden for favorable weather for the harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That this gathering of Christians learn to praise and thank God at all times, entrusting every difficulty to him. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they enter into eternal life with all the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. God of truth, you know our weaknesses and our failings. Make us faithful to, to your path. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song, the preparation of gifts, is these alone are enough. Number 397. He humbled himself, born of the Virgin, 
By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as if our end we acclaim. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other sign of peace. Yes.
after many years of faithful service, thousands of meals being served, fresh from the oven, our stove top is dying. <laughs> the burner doesn't work very well anymore. The uh, it's unreliable, and you know how it is when you're open when you try to start it, and all you hear is click, 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 and nothing happens. And when that happens, what what comes out of the oven? Gas. Gas. Yes. You have to try to manually lit it, and that's very, very dangerous. I don't want anyone to get blown up or the parents to blow up or anything like that. So for that to stop, make sure the oven is like us. We get old, sometimes parts need to be replaced. <laughs> and that's gonna cost some money. So what I need from you is $5,000. <laughs> yes, it's expensive, but these industrial sides, you don't want a regular custom, regular house oven. You need them a manufactured for long. And I expect this new one, it's gonna last, outlast me and, for, and many of us here. But that's what it's for. If you could help us out in that, if you don't, you know what's going to happen? No more holes in a But before that happens, Pam is going to sing you some songs. She oh. promised us to sing us some oven songs in remembrance of it until you give. She's going to. No, you have more effective because you don't. Because according to her, she can't sing work of fiddle. So. so her, her threat is more effective than mine. So, you know, I have to say, but either way. So do give so that we can together serve many other meals, not only for this generation right here and now, but also future generations. So to help out and bring community and people be fed. Not only will we be fed here with Jesus, but we're also fed with the food that comes from the wonderful Knights of Columbus breakfast. So I just invite you to keep that in mind. And so I, Pam, you're going to make some envelopes for us for that. That would be great if you could do that. Sure. So you guys can contribute to that. <coughs> and also, I'll ask Body to put it online. So if you wish, you can donate the new high-tech way to credit cards and give us for that. That would be great. Also, remember, tomorrow, next week's collection is going to be for October World Mission Month. So keep that in mind. And... Remember, if you have upcoming birthdays, let us know so we can celebrate birthdays with you. Send us a picture of you when you were young and sweet. And like fine wine, you only get younger and sweeter over time. So send those recent pictures and some that reveal things that most people don't know about you. And of course, if you have upcoming wedding anniversary, let us know so we can celebrate your, birth, your wedding anniversary together. Send us a picture of you when you were young getting married and a recent picture with you and your family and a point in memory that day. You know, these events are kind of important. Why is it important? Because of the broken world that we live in. It's wonderful to celebrate the little things that happen in our life. And that's a wonderful thing. I'm looking forward to someday when Sue doesn't hurt the show, when your ribs doesn't hurt anymore. That's a good celebration too. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part of life. We have our setbacks and good things in life but you know God is always there. Let us pray. Grant to us, we pray, that benefiting part from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, the defense of this battle, be your protection against the wickedness of the snares of the devil. May God rebuke and may help you pray. And to help the oppressed of the heavenly hosts by the power of God. Cast in the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who run about the world seeking the good of souls. Amen. Our closing song is Rain Down, number 614. <laughs>
Yeah.